Problem 5 reads, determine the current in each branch of the circuit below. We have a 2 volt battery, a 3 volt battery, a 1 ohm resistor, a 5 ohm resistor, and a 4 ohm resistor. You want to use Kirchhoff's rules to determine the current in this branch, in this branch, and in this branch. Turn off your VCR now and try to solve that problem. Here is a schematic diagram of our problem. The first thing we're going to do is to apply Kirchhoff's first rule. We first draw in the directions of the currents. Let's say the current here is going to be I1. Let's let the current in this branch be I2. And the current here be I3. Remember, we're simply assuming a direction of these currents. These directions may be wrong. If they are, the values for the current will come out to be negative. Let's now write our equation. We have going in I1 and I3 and going out I2. So we're going to write I1 plus I3 is equal to I2. That takes care of our first equation. Let's apply our second equation. The sum of the EMFs around any closed loop is equal to the sum of the IR drops around that loop. First thing we have to do is define our loops in a direction. Let's take this upper loop and we will trace around it in a clockwise direction and I'll pick the lower loop and go around it in a clockwise direction. In the upper loop, I have for the sum of the EMFs, the first EMF that I encounter, I go through from positive to negative. Our rule then is that it will be negative. Also, the second EMF we encounter down here, we also go through from positive to negative. So both of these EMFs are going to be negative. So I'm going to write minus 2, minus 3. I'm going to leave out the units for the time being. They tend to be confusing if left in these equations. Now I have to write the sum of the IR drops. The first resistance I encounter is 1 ohms. The current is flowing this way. I am going through it in the opposite direction. So it is going to be negative. So I'm going to write minus 1 ohms times I1. And then the next resistor is 5 ohms. I'm also going through it opposite to the direction of the current I2. So I'm going to write that this is minus 5 I2. That's all of the resistors in that loop. We move down to the next loop to get another equation. For the sum of the EMFs, I have only one EMF in this loop. I go through it from the negative to the positive terminal, and therefore it's going to be positive. So I'm going to write plus 3, and that's going to be equal to 5 ohms. I go through in the direction of I2, so that's plus 5 I2. And the 4 ohm resistor, I am going through in the same direction as I3, so it's going to be plus 4 times I3. All right, there's our three equations that we now have to solve simultaneously for the variables I1, I2, and I3. You can solve these simultaneous equations any way that you want. I'm going to do this. Let's try to eliminate one of the variables first. Suppose we try to eliminate the I1. If I solve this equation for I1, I would write I1 is equal to I2 minus I3. And then we'll take that value for I1 and substitute it in here. 
And if you do that and collect terms, you should find on the left minus 5 and on the right minus 6 I2 plus I3. All right. Now, if we examine these two equations, we find that these two equations contain only the variable I2 and I3. So, we're now down to two equations with two unknowns. Suppose we tried to eliminate the I3 from these two equations. And to do that, suppose I multiply this top equation by minus 4. Why minus 4? Well, I have a 4i3 in this equation, a 1i3 here. If this was a minus 4i3, I could add it to this, and they would cancel out. So we'll try that. We multiply the whole equation by minus 4. Minus 4 times minus 5 is plus 20. Minus 4 times minus 6 is plus 24. And that is i2. And minus 4 times 1i3 is minus 4i3. Now, if we add these two equations together, on the left, we have 23. On the right, 24 and 5, 29i2. And minus 4i3 plus 4i3 is 0. We have one equation and one unknown. We solve that for I2, and we get that I2 is 23 divided by 29, which turns out to be 0.793 amperes. That gets, us, gets one of our currents. Now, if we take this value for I2 and substitute it up into this equation, and then solve this equation for I3. And you can do that and confirm that what you get for I3 is minus 0.241 amps. So that's I3. What does this negative sign mean? It means that the original direction that we have assumed for I3 which was that direction, is actually incorrect. I3 is actually in the opposite direction. I1, we can use this equation up here now that we know I2 and I3. And you can plug values into there and find that this comes out to be 1.03 amps. All right, <clears throat> they are our three currents we have solved our problem. Let's move on now to our next problem.